Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, for example, فَهَلْ يَنظُرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَن تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا فَأَنَّا لَهُمْ إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ ذِكْرَاهُمْ In chapter 47 verse 18 Allah says, Are they waiting then for anything else than the last hour to suddenly come upon them? Already some of its tokens have come, some of its signs have already happened. But when it does actually come upon them, where will any time be left for them to take heed? The scholars have unanimously agreed that this is a clear verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are signs that have passed and signs that will still come. So the Quran makes reference to the signs of the last hour. Why did I mention this ayah? Because those who only believe in the Quran and disbelieve in the hadith, they say to you everything about the signs of the last hour, the Dajjal, the, the Antichrist, the Messiah, the, the Isa alayhi salam, the Mahdi, all of that is a lie because it's not in the Quran. That the Quran makes reference to the signs. The Quran, doesn't, the Quran does not come to talk to you about what these signs are. The Quran is a reference. It guides people on a daily basis of how to worship Allah. So until the Dajjal and all that come, the Quran is not interested in the Dajjal itself and the Masih right now because Allah does not want to busy us with something that is in the future that we don't know how to interpret yet. So as not to distract ourselves from what we're supposed to be doing today. Today on Tuesday, now. Just before Aisha, what are you supposed to be doing? Waiting for the Dajjal? No, you're going to go to Aisha. So focus on now. And that's what the Quran talks about. What you need now, not tomorrow, not whatever. Like the man who said, Ya Rasulullah, Mata Sa'a, a messenger of Allah, when is the last hour coming? He said, Mada a'adatta laha. Well, what have you prepared for it? And another hadith, he says, if you heard about the last hour coming, it's about to come, and you have a plant to plant it in the ground, then plant it. Don't say, oh, there's no use. He said, because after that, there will still be life among people. You have been created to be tested with your work and your deeds. Not what the outcome is, but what you're supposed to be doing now. Brothers and sisters, Allah also says, uh, in another verse, يَوْمَ يَأْتِ بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيمَانِهَا خَيْرًا قُلْ انْتَظِرُوا إِنَّا مُنْتَظِرُونَ Chapter 6 verse 158 Allah says what? Do they wait either for the angels to appear? Before them, or for your Lord to come onto them, or for some clear signs of your Lord to appear before them. When some clear signs of your Lord will appear, believing will be of no avail to anyone who did not believe before or who earned no good deeds through his faith. Say, wait on, we too are waiting. What does this verse talk about? Again, there's reference to future signs that will come. How do we know about those signs? Well, we wait for the messengers and the prophets to tell us. But there's reference to future signs that will come. But listen to what Allah is saying. Why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa This is now to us. Why do, what is the wisdom? We shouldn't say why. We should say what is the wisdom behind why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bring right now these divine supernatural signs before our eyes. Why don't we see angels descending and I don't know, they always use the word white. He's wearing white from top to bottom. How do you know angels always wear white, for example? It's always white. It could be rearing except what I'm saying is that people sometimes see things, maybe, maybe they're seeing things, I don't know. Maybe it's something else. But these big signs don't happen now, brothers and sisters. They happen at the time of the prophets, but not now. What is Allah telling us? He's saying right now, Allah has given you a choice of what to do. It's in your hands right now. If Allah were to show you the unseen right now, well then Allah is saying, well there's no point. Whoever believes, how can you tell who truly believes and who can't believe? Everybody will just believe and say, oh, there it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created you for a test in this life. Otherwise, why send all the messengers? Why send all the books? Why send all the prophets? Why send it all? If God can just show you, uh, you know, the angels coming down and descending. But it's a matter of faith. Which of you truly deserves? And there are believers and disbelievers, alhamdulillah. And Allah sent us the Quran, which is enough. And the prophets and his hadiths to be enough, inshaAllah ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, it's up to us. We have, alhamdulillah, enough. 
We have our fingernails, uh, our fingertips. Is that not a miracle? The sun rising and setting, is that not a miracle before us? But everything. And Allah says in the Quran, وَكَمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ And how many signs in the heavens do they pass by and turn away from? You don't recognize them because we got used to it. Allah also says to those Quranites, He says, in another verse, I'll just read from the end of it. Chapter 16, verse 44, Allah says, We raised the messengers earlier with clear signs and divine books. And we have now sent down this dhikr, this reminder, meaning this Qur'an, upon you, O Muhammad. Now listen, that you may clearly explain and clarify to people the teaching that has been sent down for them and that the people may themselves reflect. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is a classical evidence that the Qur'an itself is saying we sent this Qur'an upon you, O Muhammad, as we sent it upon the prophets before you. Why did we send it upon you, men? Why? So that you can teach the people what is in it. How do we know what is in it without hadith? Sorry, the light is reflecting on my screen, so sometimes I'm not seeing it. So chapter 4, verse 159, it says, There are none among the people of the book but will believe in him, meaning Jesus, before his death. And he will be a witness against them on the day of resurrection. People of the book, Jews, and even from the Christians. So there will be, inshallah, conversions and goodness. We all know that the Qur'an tells us about the end of the world and how it will happen. Allah says that the angel Israfil will be commanded to blow into the trumpet. Twice, the first time he blows into it, everything, well, everything on earth and in the heavens will die. Illa ma sha'a rabbuk, except Allah says, except whomever Allah wills not to die. Perhaps there are people, inhabitants of the heavens that don't die. And then, فَثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنظُرُونَ Then the trumpet is blown a second time and the day of resurrection comes. Everybody is watching. Some people ask me, why doesn't Allah unite the people all together and just rid us of all these atrocities and bring peace to everyone? Allah subhanahu wa says this in the Quran. He says, and why don't they do that? And he replies by saying, if Allah wanted to, he would have done it. وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa has created you for a test in this life. He might as well not have sent the verses and the prophets and the messengers and all of that stuff. But Allah has left it to you with the freedom of choice. And every oppression that happens because of what people do. And there are others who will stand up. But mark my words, things don't stay the same. And insha'Allah. I'm not even going to say insha'Allah. Because the words of Allah and His Messenger are true. The promise of Allah is true. And peace will come back. Justice will come back. And Allah will give victory to his righteous. When will that happen? Allah knows the state of the Muslim world. And he knows the state of the non-Muslim world. And we all know the hypocrisy in the Muslim world. We know the leadership in the Muslim world. We know how many people have betrayed their own kind in the Muslim world. Our Muslim world is not that good as we think. But I have hope that this generation or the next generation, inshallah, by the way the trend is going, there is an awakening. And what's happening today in Gaza the most transparent, most clear sight that we have ever seen in this last 75 years has manifested itself by the will of Allah, not just by, through Muslims' eyes, but non-Muslims' eyes. Random people who are not spokespeople in Gaza are speaking and showing what is actually happening in real time, every day, a different person. Compare that to choosing a spokesperson with certain scripts to say. And that's why people are not believing the other narrative, no matter how hard they try the truth is, subhanAllah, it's just like that. That's why people are believing the other narrative and they're waking up. So, may Allah bring justice to everybody and to change the state of this ummah to better. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.